through a short PowerPoint presentation here on the six challenges and issues when implementing the death penalty. Uh, these are not uh, the only challenges or issues. You'll find when you do your research that there are several more, but these are the most uh, prevalent challenges and issues that the courts face when implementing the death penalty. And these are the ones that defense attorneys will uh, attempt to uh, approach the uh, Supreme Courts on on these issues uh, for their clients. Uh, I'm going to have you look at all six of the ones that I've posted here, but uh, you, I want you to write in detail your understanding of what these challenges are, and you can add two others that are in this fairly extensive list. You can use the six that I've put down, or you can pick four out of the six and then add two more uh, like I said before, there, there are several issues and challenges, and these aren't the only ones. These aren't inclusive of uh, the challenges or issue when imposing the death penalty. So I'm going to give you a little short uh, uh, history lesson on the death penalty, as well as go into a little bit more depth on a website that I think is pretty good. It's the Death Penalty Information Center, so we'll talk about that. For your essay, you're going to... Uh, write on these on six issues and challenges in detail. So in other words, I don't want you to just list what these challenges are. I want you to not only list them, but I want you to write in detail your understanding uh, where you're going to have to back it up by uh, uh, Supreme Court cases or any type of scholarly uh, research uh, that you have uh, found, and particularly through the DPIC website. You can use other websites, other resources, that's fine. This is going to be a scholarly essay, so I want it done in narrative, no outline to be submitted. Uh, I want it narrative, and I want you to cite your sources when you're citing facts, statistics, or quoting somebody. So this is a, this is a formal essay paper. So I'm going to start off, we're going to talk a little bit about the historical methods of execution and going back into antiquities and Roman times and even before that, uh, de the death penalty or capital punishment has been used throughout, uh, uh, well, since man has really been on earth for that matter. But let's talk about crucifixions. The Romans used it extensively. Uh, against uh, rebels and traitors, uh, Christians, etc. cetera. Uh, you've got a number of others, flaying, breaking the wheel. These are all different forms of capital punishment that have been implemented and to a degree are still used uh, in the world today. Hanging is the number one method for uh, capital punishment throughout the world. Uh, so that's still in, uh, in use. Uh, most of these others, they've gone by the wayside. Uh, however, in some of your Muslim countries, though, you're, you're finding that uh, there's still some uh, fairly old methods of execution as found in the Quran. So in this PowerPoint presentation, you're going to see some titles or you'll see uh, uh, different words that may be highlighted and underlined. Uh, this is a link for the resources that I've provided for you. Again, you're not limited to these, but this is to help you out, to help expedite your research. So when you start talking about uh, worldwide methods of execution, like I said before, hanging is the most prevalent, but believe it or not, uh, the firing squad is still used. We still have a couple states uh, in the United States that uh, have used it as an alternate form of execution. Uh, lethal injection is the number one way that we execute people in, in the United States, but that's coming under scrutiny now, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Stoning, uh, still used in a lot of your uh, Muslim countries, same with beheading. Shooting, firing squad, pretty much goes down the same way. Uh, maybe not quite uh, in the same manner, but the uh, same idea. Uh, gas chamber electrocution. Um, some of your Muslim countries will also uh, push people off of high buildings, bridges, cliffs, what have you. 
Uh, I kind of like Sedan's method where they will implement capital punishment and kill the offender by the same method that they use to uh, kill their victim. So uh, that's what you call real retribution. So when you see these uh, highlighted and underlined words or sentences or titles, click on that for your link. So just as an example, I click on it. And here you have a more detailed report by the Cornell Law uh, School on the different methods of execution worldwide. So this will give you a more uh, detailed uh, example of uh, what other countries are doing. As I said before, uh, hanging is the most widely used method of execution. Uh, and uh, we still here in the United States also have that as an alternate method. Not every state employs it, but some states have it as a backup way. Uh, the six issues and challenges that I have selected uh, when uh, for implementing the death penalty, these are the issues and challenges that most often come up in appeals processes. And it's also the uh, same issues and challenges a judge or jury must uh, overcome when deciding on a death penalty for an offender. So you've got proportionality. Uh, how is the, uh, uh, the manner of death going to be imposed? So the imposition process. Uh, what was the nature and background of the, the offender? In other words, uh, a lot of it has to do with mental competency uh, and insanity. Uh, you do, this is probably the number one thing right now that people are looking at and scrutinizing very heavily, is the bias, discrimination, and sentencing disparity. And we'll, I'll give you some links on that as far as your research. Uh, the method of death um, and uh, the competence of uh, counsel was the... Uh, uh, attorney for the defendant competent throughout the proceedings. So these are the same, uh, the main issues and challenges I want you to look at. Uh, I just don't want you to list them. Uh, I want you to go into detail as to what it means as far as proportionality to the offense. Uh, in other words, is a death penalty appropriate for the type of offense that was committed? You know, how, how the, uh, uh, the, uh, the penalty is going to be imposed. Uh, the nature and background of the offender. I want you to go into complete detail, citing different court cases uh, and uh, any other type of uh, scholarly research. So you have to define what these are and then go into more detail as to how they apply to uh, as an issue or a challenge to the death penalty. So you talk about proportionality. Uh, you've got links here. And the Eighth Amendment basically says that there, there should be no uh, cruel and unusual punishment, but there's different court cases that says the, uh, implementing the death penalty in uh, severe and extreme uh, cases for verdicts uh, is constitutional. So, but the question is, is it cruel and unusual punishment? The, this essay is not, and I repeat, is not an essay on what your personal feelings are, whether you're for or against the death penalty. I need to get that out right now. This is strictly your understanding of what, this, of what six challenges or issues are to implement the death penalty. Uh, I'm not into this moral or ethical debate. Uh, this is going to be more of a scholarly, scholarly approach in your understanding. So you have the Eighth Am Amendment to the Constitution. Here you have a link that will go into more detail uh, regarding the Eighth Amendment. Uh, it's from the Legal Information uh, Institute. So uh, you don't have to just use these, like I said before. You can go and use other resources. So, you know, research the Eighth Amendment on your own. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, does the punishment fit the crime? And then you also have the federal murder uh, uh, rule for, uh, for the death penalty, and particularly in an act of treason or espionage. In the states, you have a felony murder rule. So again, you have links. Click on those for additional information. 
And here you'll have different court cases or different uh, sections of the federal code that cover the death penalty. Here you've got uh, the state felony murder rule. So the uh, rules and regulations for implementing it are slightly different. These you have um, uh, different uh, different reports and studies on uh, on uh, different cases that uh, have resulted in the death penalty. So uh, you'll see some uh, terminology here that you should be familiar with as far as mitigating and aggravating factors. But this is the Death Penalty Information Center. This is a good source. But the two main things I want you to look at are issues, because here are all the different challenges and issues that we're talking about uh, when we're implementing the death penalty. I've only picked six, but obviously there's many more. So you take the four out of the six that I've given you, and then you can pick any one of these others, but you have to uh, write some detail as to what your understanding is when they start talking about that. Uh, and I want you to look at the facts. And again, there's some um, manner and modes of death and other detail uh, uh, graphs and links as to uh, uh, the death penalty here in the United States. Still talking about proportionality, you've got two major cases here. You've got Coker versus Georgia, Kennedy versus Louisiana. I said that you'll find some of the court decisions may infuriate you in this Kennedy versus Louisiana. This was a court case. Here's a link here that describes the case. But in a nutshell, uh, this individual, Patrick Kennedy, uh, raped a, uh, I think it was 11 or 12-year-old uh, victim. And he was uh, given the death penalty upon his conviction. Uh, the state Supreme Court overturned the uh, sentence and said that because the victim did not die in that case, uh, the crime was excessive or the sentence was excessive to the crime. You may or may not agree with that, but that's what the Louisiana Supreme Court uh, decided. Coker was an uh, inmate who had uh, several felony convictions and had been in prison, incarcerated for a number of years. He escaped out of prison. Uh, went, uh, he went in and uh, burglarized a house when a resident was in there. It's what you call, uh, uh, well, it's a hot burglary because somebody was in there. He ended up raping a woman. Uh, who was living at that uh, residence. Based on his past criminal history and the fact that he was an escaped convict, uh, he was given the death penalty for that additional crime. And Georgia basically uh, uh, they, uh, uh, overturned his uh, death conviction and said that it was not because the victim did not die. Uh, so the bottom line is with the uh, death penalty, imposing the death penalty, there usually has to, there has to be involved a, a, of a death. Uh, otherwise, uh, they look at it as uh, uh, not very proportional to what the sentence is. So anyway, another link. So you can click on that and uh, get more details. Uh, Imposing the death penalty, uh, there's some terms as far as discretion, arbitrary, capriciousness. Uh, you have to look at aggravating, mitigating circumstances surrounding the crime, uh, jury decisions. Uh, there's racism. There's disparity. Uh, it's all fairly, these are all different uh, uh, problems associated with opposing the death penalty. So that goes under, when you talk about imposing or in, uh, the imposition of the death penalty, you break it down into these different uh, uh, subsections. And this is what I want you to start looking at to be able to uh, talk about when we talk about imposition. So these are links and they're court cases, other studies, and each one of them has its own link. So just click down and uh, read it. Now we talk about the race of death row inmates um, and how uh, 
it isn't very proportional to the amount of, uh, say, African Americans on death row. However, when you look at the statistics, there's still more whites uh, on death row than there are any other race. Uh, blacks are second, your Latinos are next, and then you have uh, other races. This will give you more detailed, this link here, more detailed information as to uh, the race, uh, the victims, so on and so forth, uh, the race of the victims. Uh, it does have some interesting information as to uh, who will most likely be sentenced to death uh, based on the race of the victim and the race of the perpetrator. So I want you to look at that. I want you to look at this graph here. Look at the current death row populations by race. This is new. This is this is the latest statistic. So uh, as of April 2015, but look at California. We have 746 inmates on death row in this state. And yet you find that there is a large portion of the population that is against the death penalty. They're anti-capital punishment. Why do we have 746 people on death row? We have twice as many inmates on death row than just about any other state. The one that comes closest to us is Florida with 401. So uh, I want you to think about uh, uh, that statistic. Uh, I will put that on our Padlet discussion board, and I'm going to see what you come up with as far as what, what your ideas are as to why we have so many people on death row. So look at these graphs. Uh, look at the, uh, uh, the information. You can go up. There's additional uh, links from a national standpoint and death row populations by race. So... Uh, go ahead and click on those for additional information. Now you've got the race of the victims, and again, it goes back to the same link that I just showed you. It's just a different graph. So, so race of the victims in 16 or 1976. So, um, you know, by far, there's more whites that are killed. Uh, by suspects who uh, end up receiving the death penalty by and large. You can see how much uh, out of uh, the number of victims in these death penalty cases, three quarters of the victims are white. Now, if you go back up here, the race of the defendants executed in the U.S., um, the blacks, uh, there are more actually uh, they're, again, they're second as compared to whites, still lead at 55%. So look at those graphs, research it a little bit if you're interested in that, but uh, I want you to be able to uh, uh, articulate, uh, uh, you know, be able to, to use that as a background. Now, you start talking about the nature and background of the offender. You know, we have to look at mental illness, and here's a link here. Uh, you have to look at intellectual behavioral di uh, disabilities, what the person's IQ is, uh, any types of retardation, uh, any type of adaptive disorders. Uh, other issues are uh, imp imposing a death penalty on juveniles because normally uh, we don't do that. Uh, even if... Uh, uh, the crime involved murder or what have you, if somebody was a juvenile that committed uh, uh, a murder, uh, they're not really, uh, they're not eligible for the death penalty, but there, there are, there may be certain s situations or circumstances where uh, that could change. So, uh, but right now, if you look here, and this is a court case, uh, basically citing that people under 18 uh, imposing the death penalty was considered cruel and unusual punishment. So it's been barred by the Constitution. Uh, but there's some court cases that argued that because some uh, uh, children were uh, basically uh, being looked at as far as uh, having the death penalty imposed against them in their case. So juveniles, another one is women. Should we be executing women? Uh, so you'll go and click on that link, and this will give you additional information on uh, 
uh, you know, the, the mental processes, gender, gender uh, what have you, uh, when the uh, death penalty comes up for consideration. Sentencing disparity, you've got jury bias, judicial bias, you get jury discrimination, judicial discrimination, sentencing disparity. These are all links that will uh, reinforce your argument. Now, your competence of trial uh, counsel, basically, uh, one of the issues that come up that uh, uh, as far as overturning your death sentence, could be an incompetent uh, defense attorney. Or you may have prosecutorial misconduct where evidence may have been held that could uh, uh, exonerate you uh, in this uh, alleged crime. Or denial of any type of legal services. Also, per per basically means that you're representing yourself. You are your own counsel. So you are a counsel for yourself. You take the place of an attorney. I wouldn't recommend it because the success rate is very low when people go pro per, particularly in a death penalty case. So uh, an interesting individual was Ted Bundy, who is a serial killer, killed a number of women, sexually assaulted and uh, ended up killing them, was on a crime spree, spree throughout the uh, country back in the uh, middle to late 70s and was caught. And during his trial, he had several different trials. Uh, he escaped, uh, he was convicted, was given the death penalty, he escaped one time out of Colorado. He fled to Florida, killed a couple of uh, co-eds at uh, Florida State University. And he represented himself, and the judge even commented that he said, you know, Mr. Bundy, uh, you would have made an, uh, an outstanding attorney. So Ted Bundy uh, represented himself, obviously did a pretty good job, but not a good enough to get himself off. He was uh, executed uh, uh, some years back. So additional issues, these you can pick a couple of these. Uh, if you don't want to write about all six that I had mentioned earlier in the presentation. So you've got clemency uh, issues, deterrence, uh, foreign nationals. Should we impose the death penalty on foreign nationals? I mean, foreign nationals are given uh, constitutional rights uh, while they're here in this country for due process. So if they commit a heinous crime, will that make them eligible for the death penalty? But that's an issue in imposing it. The uh, question of innocence, we've talked about people on death row being innocent and the use of DNA for exoneration or uh, other types of scientific uh, technology used uh, to uh, prove their innocence. Uh, any type of international uh, questions, uh, uh, any you know diplomatic immunity, that type of thing. Uh, Native Americans is another one. And uh, Native Americans, for the most part, uh, live in what uh, a reservation that is controlled by the United States government. It has the overarching uh, uh, duty uh, to supply uh, uh, the uh, you know the United States laws and so on and so forth. However, the uh, tribal uh, Tribes that live in the reservations are allowed a certain amount of uh, what they call tribal sovereignty, where they're looked at having their own nation. It's like going on to a Marine Corps base or what have you. Uh, the uh, laws that are uh, on the books during, in the reservation or, say, on a military compound are usually through federal standards. Uh, the Indian uh, population may have their own laws and, and customs. So uh, the question is, if somebody commits a uh, murder or some violent crime on a reservation, the fact that it's on the reservation, does that mean they should be eligible for the death penalty? Then you talked about the victims, the cost uh, to implement the death penalty. So these are all issues. So you can pick one of these or the ones that you find on the uh, Death Penalty Information Center and uh, include that as one of, one of your six. Uh, our authorized methods of, uh, of um, uh, imposing a death penalty here in the United States 
most prominent is lethal injection. You have the electrocution. You have the gas chamber hanging and firing squads. So these are all accepted methods to impose the death penalty. Right now, lethal injection is being scrutinized. We buy the components, uh, the chemicals for the uh, injections during the process, but they're manufactured in Great Britain who does not have the death penalty, and they are refusing to send us now. There's an embargo uh, where they won't send us the, uh, uh, the chemicals, the, the plants that are manufacturing this. So, you know, you may see, we may go back to the electrocution gas chamber hanging or the firing squads. And the question is, I mean, is that kind of archaic or what have you? Uh, but the Constitution here says that uh, doesn't demand that there should be an avoidance of pain. So uh, there could be some pain involved, and it's still within the, uh, the Eighth Amendment. And it's not a violation. Here's just a graph of the different states that have uh, uh, the death penalty in the, the manner that they uh, implement it. Now, there's a number of states that have outlawed the death penalty. You've got Alaska, Hawaii. Uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, et cetera, all the way around. But uh, the vast majority of states here in this country still have the death penalty, as does California. We go by lethal gas, the gas chamber, or the uh, lethal injection, that we still have the highest number of inmates on death row. So that must mean something. These are all death penalty cases that you can use to reinforce your argument. I'd expect you to research all of them. I've given you a little short synopsis of what each one of these is, uh, but obviously the case will give you more detail as to why the decision was made here. So those are death penalty cases that you could look at to support your, uh, your essay. And then finally you have the Death Penalty Information Center. It's a DPIC link and if you click on that, you can also Google it. But it's a pretty complete website when you start talking about uh, uh, capital punishment. So you have fact sheets, uh, upcoming executions, databases, uh, information state by state. But two of the main things I want you to look at are the issues here. This will outline your issues and facts. So. Uh, you can go through and read about that. Use that in your essay. If you're going to use any uh, uh, statistics or any um, uh, quotes or anything, make sure you cite your resource. Give credit. Otherwise, you're going to be involved in plagiarism, and that's not good. So that's going to uh, conclude this um, a quick little presentation. So if you've got any questions regarding this, your essay is due next Wednesday, uh, the 25th at uh, 4.30. Uh, please get a hold of me, text me, email me, call me if you need to, uh, if you need something cleared up. But again, in, in conclusion, this is not an essay on whether you agree or disagree with the death penalty. It's not an argument for that. This is uh, an essay that's going to show me your understanding of the major issues or challenges. Use four of the six that I talked about in uh, the earlier uh, PowerPoint slide, and then you choose two of your own. So I want a total of six, and write about those. It's due through Turnitin uh, on Wednesday the 25th. So I'm going to sign off, and uh, again, if there's any questions, please get a hold of me.